Hello, Take On Board peeps. Welcome to the first episode for 2020. So this episode will be 20 tips for 2020. Some of the highlights of the first six months of this pod to power you into the next year. But before I start, I just need to mention the catastrophic bushfires that we are currently experiencing in Australia. As I record today here in Melbourne, we're cloaked in smoke, even though we are some distance from the actual fires. But everyone in Australia, no matter how far from the fires, is affected. There are many houses that have been destroyed, farms, wineries, businesses and schools. In some places, whole communities are gone. Thousands of people have been stranded and are being airlifted or sea lifted out. And of course, some people have lost their lives. It's impossible not to be affected by these things, even if you're not in the direct line. So whilst it might seem like a long bow, there's a myriad of governance issues that are connected to these fires. How do organisations prepare? How do emergency services prepare? What are the risks? How do we discuss climate change in the boardroom? What does this mean for business, such as wineries? What does it mean for tourism? These are important conversations to have. And now is the time to have those conversations. So over the next few weeks, I'm hoping to bring you some of these discussions. I'm in the process of lining up people for interviews, although I'm mindful that I don't want to be bothering those that are in the midst of a crisis. I'm hoping to bring you conversations with a lawyer who specialises in climate risk, someone on the board of a winery, someone from a tourism organisation and others. If your organisation is having these discussions and you'd like to be on the pod, or if you know of someone that would be good, please feel free to get in touch with me. My contact details are in the show notes. And speaking of show notes, there are some links to organisations that you can donate to. The Victorian Bushfire Appeal, the South Australian Bushfire Appeal, the Kangaroo Island Bushfire Appeal, and an article from the Sydney Morning Herald that outlines a number of organisations for people, food and animals. My apologies for starting the pod and for 2020 on such a sombre note, but I also know that's how many of us are feeling. Right, let's get on with the show now, shall we? Hello and welcome to the Take On Board podcast, where we talk all things boards and governance. I'm your host, Halia Svensson. Being on a board can be interesting, valuable and exciting, yet it can also be really lonely, challenging and hard. So here at Take On Board, we'll bring you weekly tips, tricks and advice to help you build your governance wisdom. We'll shine a light on how to navigate your way onto your first board or to build your board portfolio. We'll also help you to work through those challenges that keep you awake at night. Each week, I'll talk to women who have been there, done that, and together we'll discover what we need to take on board to be your best in the boardroom. Greetings, take on board peeps, and welcome to 2020. In December, I asked the take on board Facebook group what I should be doing with the pod over the Christmas New Year period. You very kindly encouraged me to take a break for two weeks and then to come back with some top tips from the podcast so far. So today, I bring you 20 board tips to take you into 2020. In doing so, I acknowledge my good friend Jackie Cooper who helped me bring this together. There's no way I would have been able to do this and pull out all the key themes and my favourite bits as it's a bit like having to choose your favourite child and I love all of it. So thank you, Jackie, for helping me pull this together. So let's go back to the start. The first Take On Board episode aired in July 2019 with the fabulous Sandra Loder. And over six months, I've interviewed more than 25 different women who have passed on what they've learned about getting on a board and being an effective board member. There are some standout themes across all 26 episodes. There's a loose order to this list, starting with getting on a board to good things to do when on a board. And the number one tip is without a doubt the most important theme. So let's start, shall we? Tip number 20. Organisations and their boards will continue to change. In episode five, I spoke with Julie Bignall about getting attention in the boardroom. 
I think the role of boards has changed a lot mm. um, over the last few decades. Back then, boards were far more likely to accept that management ran the organisation, you know, and that they were, the board was more concerned about ticking off on things from a compliance perspective. Key tips on how organisations and their boards will continue to change? Firstly, increased visibility. There's so much scrutiny of boards these days through royal commissions, through the media and other ways. Secondly, there's more pressure. Boards can unravel very quickly today. Thirdly, for board members, be active, not passive. Members are increasingly expected to know more and be informed. So do what you can to remain informed. Fourthly, strategy timelines. They've shortened over the years. Key tip number 19, get board ready. In episode nine, I spoke with Anita Roper around getting board ready. Most of my career, I've been involved in committees or boards in in one way or another, either as a participant being on a committee or through reporting to a board. So I have a fairly long history. I had got to the point where I wanted to take that next step and that next step for me was to, to look at a, a director career and to, to build the skill set required for that. So I completed the company director's course, the AICD's company director's course in about 2011. And I was also accepted into the AICD's chairman's mentoring program. So key tips around getting board ready, three steps. Firstly, observe a board volunteer or be on an executive committee or report to a board. Do what you can to build that governance wisdom. Secondly, try my board Kickstarter or board accelerator program or any of the other programs that are run. Thirdly, do some training. It might be through the Institute of Company Directors or another organisation. And there are some grants for that. I'll put some links to that also in the show notes. Tip number 18. Get your CV ready. So in episode six, I spoke to Dominique Hess about her board resume as she was applying for a board role. It was an on-air strategy session. So I really went through her resume and gave her all of my tips about how to put together your board resume. So if that's what you're doing, go back to that episode. So your very first line, I believe I will be a great addition to this board. You know, well, I'm sure you do believe it and I believe it as well, but take the believe out. I will be a great addition to this board. Such a habit to always kind of soften. Yes. And not be too warrior-like in these sorts of things. Top tips for putting together your board resume. Tip number one, keep your resume to two to three pages. Keep it scannable like a shopping list so people can really pull out those key things about you. Tip number two, focus on governance. This is not your executive resume. This is not for getting a job. This is for getting a board role. So really pull out your board and governance experience and make that number one. Tip number three, the application letter doesn't need to answer all of the questions. You can draw that out through your whole application process, the resume and the letter. Tip number four, remove softeners. Things like, I believe... I just want to say, I think, take those out and it'll make your application much stronger. Top tip number 17, networks matter. I interviewed Claire McCartan from Davison Recruitment in episode 22 and she talked about using your networks, as did a number of other people. You do want a well-networked individual because the more connected someone is, generally the more able to generate ideas they will be and access knowledge that the organisation might benefit from. Top tips across all the episodes about using your networks. Firstly, use those networks to find opportunities. Lots of board roles are sourced and filled through existing networks. So if you know people that are on board roles or in particular organisations that you're interested in, get in touch with them. Tip number two around using your networks. Use them for information. Tap into those networks to get an understanding of organisations or of board roles or to fill the gaps that you might have. Tip number three about using your networks, use them for diversity. 
Diversify your thinking, diversify your understanding, diversify where you look and how you look. Top tip number 16, leverage workplace roles into governance roles. So in episode eight, I spoke to Leonie Morgan about getting more women into decision-making roles. While I was working at IRV, Industrial Relations Victoria, I worked part-time there and I also worked for the Australian Film Commission on a project to get more women in, into television, into senior levels in television. So I had networks there. Top tips around leveraging workplace roles into governance roles. Firstly, know what's going on. Observe your organisation's board and get to know those members of the board. Secondly, advisory committees. Keep an eye out for them. They're a great way of being able to get to know your board and subcommittees as well. Third way to leverage workplace roles into governance roles, volunteer your time. Volunteer your time to support the board, into committees, whatever it may be. You may end up being co-opted as a non-voting member or even a voting member on that board. Top tip number 15, follow your passions and your interests. In episode 11, I spoke to Sandy Bell about following passions and purpose. Young Sandy was pretty green and naive, didn't really know what was going on, world away from neurosurgery at the Alfred. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, they were good times, yeah. That came about because I was following a passion and an interest um, and I was looking for opportunities that allowed me to translate what I was learning academically, which was all fabulous and great but not particularly practical, into the practical realities of feminist politics and advocacy for women and leading and, you know, women's leadership. So top tips around following passions and purpose. Firstly, have a passion peer network. Surround yourself with others who have the same passions and purpose. Tip number two about following passions and interests. Find the right fit. So if you're looking for a board, really research the board and the organisation and find out which ones will really fit what you're about. Third tip around following passions and interests. Be authentic. Be you. Reflect your passions in your CV. Reflect your passions in the applications. Reflect your passions in the interview. They want somebody who is passionate about their organisation and you need to show that to them. So only apply for those that you're really passionate and interested in. Top tip number 14, understand your values. So again, Christina Leosis, I spoke to her in the After the Royal Commission episode in episode 12. It's important to stay true to who you are from... Well, I'm not going to say from a moral perspective, but around your own ethics. When you're a director, sometimes you have to put the well-being of the organisation before your own well-being. Top tips around understanding your values. Choose your top values. Tip number two around understanding your values. Values match. Make sure your values align with the organisation align with the board and align with the work that they do. Tip number three around understanding your values, adapt those values. How does the board reflect and respond to the organisation's values? So make sure the board itself can really showcase the values of the organisation in the work that they do. Top tip number 13, welcome and acknowledge the traditional owners of this country. In episode 10, I had... Oh, I was going to say I had one of my favourite conversations, but they are all my favourites. But I had a fabulous conversation with Amber Roberts about rethinking the meaning of country. It is really important to have um, that acknowledgement or welcome at the start of the meeting. Yeah. And then I think at significant meetings, as I mentioned, like AGMs, it is good to have a traditional owner welcome you to country. What are the tips around welcoming and acknowledging the traditional owners? Firstly, if you're starting out, try a script. It's okay to use a script because that's part of how we will get used to being able to acknowledge. As you get more experienced, you might go off script and make it more, more you and genuine. But if you want to start with a script, that's okay. Second tip around welcoming and acknowledging the traditional owners, learn about Indigenous governance. There's an Indigenous Governance Institute toolkit. 
So have a look through that and see if you can get some tips from that as well. Thirdly, in welcoming and acknowledging the traditional owners, Amber talked about personalising it for you and really connecting with country. Maybe go for a walk around your organisation. Maybe go for a walk where you came from and connect to your own history and your own country and the country of that organisation in being able to communicate that in acknowledging. Top tip number 12, the board is a team. So in episode four, around courageous questions, I spoke with Llewellyn Prane. Less high performing boards can be passive and reactive. They sort of wait for management to tell them what's happening next. Passivity can be a real trap and it can sort of drain energy. And when you're on a high performing board, the energy in the room is high. Collegiality is what, for me, makes a high performing board. The higher the trust in the boardroom, the more likely that people are going to feel comfortable to say what they're really thinking. Top tips around the board being a team. Firstly, they are group decisions. Individuals bring their perspective to the boardroom, but individuals don't make decisions in the boardroom. The group makes a decision and the group supports those decisions. Second tip around the board being a team. Allyship. Support each other. Be an ally, work together, get to know each other so that you can really build that team. Third tip around the board being a team, be on the lookout for dysfunctional signs. If there are passengers or people are not pulling their weight, it might be a sign that the board is dysfunctional. Do what you can to make sure everyone is part of the team and everyone is contributing to that team. Top tip number 10, embrace diversity. In episode 18, I spoke to Fiona Williams about the importance of regional boards. We tend to think perhaps it's just lawyers and accountants, and, but it, boards are really effective when you have a diverse range of skills, backgrounds and experiences. So I really encourage people to, to apply for boards and think about also finally our regional boards. Top tips about embracing diversity. Diversity is incredibly valuable for fresh ideas. It reduces groupthink on boards. Secondly, diversity is vital for better decisions. Diversity in ideas and experience leads to better solutions. Thirdly, come with a generosity of spirit. Listen to others. Give each other a chance to speak. Listen and learn from those diverse voices. Top tip number nine, align with management. So in episode seven, I spoke to Dr. Sue Kay about making problems easy to solve. I think that you can waste a lot of time at board meetings if the alignment is not there. Mm. You know, I think there are two things that happen when you don't have alignment. One is that the management team, uh, I guess, bristles at any board directives. But two, that then the board can waste a lot of time trying to get to the bottom of where the resistance is and why and what's going on. Tips around aligning with management? Firstly, keep a lookout for out of alignment signs. It might be that topics keep appearing on the agenda and therefore management are trying to get a steer on what the board thinks around this. Second tip on aligning with management, get aligned. Go back to basics and look at the organisation's values and purpose and come together as a senior leadership team and a board and get agreement on those things. Third tip on aligning with management and making sure you get aligned, build those relationships, not just with your co-directors on the board, but with the management team. Make sure you know what they're thinking, you have those relationships so that together you are part of a team. Top tip number eight. Put in the time. Read your papers. So in episode two, I spoke to Rachel Lowry about getting clear on intentions. If people can't give a little bit more time outside of board meetings, then you're probably not equipped maybe to to step onto a board. You need to be able to give your executive team at least some extra time. It's never going to be just, a, you know, 5 to 7 p.m. on a Thursday night. Top tips for putting in the time and reading the papers? Well, for me... Personally, my rule of thumb is that it's about 15 to 20 hours per month per board. If you're not putting in that amount of time, you're probably not putting in the time that is needed. Tip number two around putting in the time. 
You need to put aside the time not just for the meeting but your reading time. And I suggest that you put that in your calendar so that you set aside those five to six hours to really read the board papers and go through those board papers in plenty of time prior to the board meeting. Tip number three about putting in the time, know that a lot of research and preparation might get done outside of those board meetings and you want to engage in that as well before you get to the board meeting. Top tip number seven, put consumers first. So in episode 20, I spoke to Kelly O'Callaghan about putting consumers first. It's an engagement platform now that so many members of our community are using. If you're not out there engaging and you're still relying on paper-based surveys, Mm -hmm. talking to the people who walk through your front door, then 80% of your audience have just been left out of any of your community engagement and consultation. So getting boards particularly to a space where they can engage proactively, whether it is by webcasting, whether it is by having an open board meeting every now and then, or whether it's about having your board directors directly engaging with the consumers of your services is just, it's essential now. I should also say that Kelly O'Callaghan has incredible social media. And if you're interested in these tips, you should follow her on social media. So tips around putting the consumer first. Firstly, listen, really listen, ask consumers what they think Ask them to speak at a board meeting. At our board, we have patient stories at each board meeting for the hospital. There might be other ways of bringing that consumer voice into the boardroom or you might bring the consumers themselves into the board meeting. Tip number two to put consumers first, think about customer returns versus stakeholder returns. It's not just all about profit. You need to think about your customers. There's been a shift around this post the Financial Services Royal Commission as there should be. What is the best service we can do for our customers, even if that might mean we are not maximising our profit? Because in the long run, we will maximise our profit if we are looking after our customers. Top tip number six, the art of asking the good question. So in episode 13, I spoke to Joe Plummer about finding the right fit. It's about really, you know, getting comfortable in what it is that you have to offer. And I said earlier about making sure that your values are congruent with your value proposition. And I think it's it's about accepting that you don't need to be the smartest person in the room. You don't need to be a specialist in every part of, you know, what is required as a director, but you do need to be smart enough to ask the right questions and get help where you need to. Tips around the art of asking the good question? Firstly, be courageous. Speak up. Ask for help. If you're thinking it, others are thinking it. Say it. That is your role in the boardroom is to speak up. Second tip around the art of asking the good question. If you're new to a board, don't take that as meaning you shouldn't have a say and you should just sit back and listen. You will see things that other people in that boardroom do not see. Ask those questions at your first board meeting. Ask them in the first quarter of the board's meeting. Tip number three around the art of asking a good question, prepare a list. Have a list of questions that you need to ask them. Tick them off as you go. Top tip number five, find your voice. So in episode 19, I spoke to Sheena Watt around breaking down preconceptions. I often felt like I was kind of called on to be the voice of that particular group through all of those, whether that was be the voice of the young people or the women or Victorian or whatever it was. And I think about, okay, I'm pretty strong now in knowing how to be the voice on the things that I know about. And I went, what's next for me? And I feel like I'd kind of gotten to the end of the road in terms of, you know, my identity and what I could represent in the boardroom. And it wasn't until I joined the board of the Queen Elizabeth Centre and I'd like to acknowledge Sandy Bell, one of the previous podcast interviewees, a wonderful woman who's the chair, that I found how to make my voice heard on issues that aren't me. What are the tips around finding your voice? Find your voice. I spoke to Michelle Shepherd around this in episode two and there's some fantastic tips from her. I've had to develop that and I think I'm still developing that. Tip number two around find your voice. Be loud and proud. 
I spoke to Sandra Loder in episode one and she said, It's important to be loud and proud. If you want to be successful, you need to be if you want to be on a board. Tip number three about finding your voice, be brave. Julie Bignall suggests having the courage and the bravery to open your mouth and ask those questions. Julie also talked about making sure you speak up early in a meeting so that you're on the chair's radar for other things that might come up later in the meeting. Find a thing that interests you on the agenda that you think that you can ask a meaningful question and if you can't think of any meaningful questions to ask then maybe again you might not have the right pair of shoes on. Top tip number four, have a succession plan. In episode 15, I spoke to Zora Artis about an appetite for risk. We start that process a few months before the directors join the board. So because we already know who they're going to be, they've gone through the AGM, etc. So the slate's been approved. So we will go through that process of introducing them to what we expect of them as directors, all the usual things with regards to board papers, how they need to be prepared so many days in advance, all that sort of stuff. Top tips for having a succession plan. Firstly, put aside a year for you to really find that board role. It can take a year to find and recruit the right board replacement or for you to find your board role. Tip number two around a succession plan. Have a succession plan subcommittee. It might be your nominations committee, it might be your governance committee, or it might be a succession plan subcommittee. They will help to facilitate, lead and plan the transition. Third tip around succession planning, put in place some internships. Look for potential up-and-coming directors within the organisation and maybe have them observe board meetings or do an internship or a mentorship. Fourth tip around having a succession plan, just be aware of shadow directors. If you are having mentors or internships, make sure they're not also shadow directors. Top tip number three, ongoing knowledge and skill development. In episode 21, I spoke to Linda White about her joining Jean. I think that you're never old to learn things. I don't know if that's come through, but Mm. I find with the boards that I'm on that I don't think that I know everything just because I've been on um, other things before because every experience is different. The challenges can be different, but uh, the more things that you've done, even if it's, you know, you can bring those to boards. Um, I find that being on boards helps me at my work because it exposes me to a lot of different things. So top tips for ongoing knowledge and skill development. Firstly, get a mentor. They can help with introductions. They can help to boost board knowledge. They can really help to test you out and keep you accountable. Second tip for ongoing knowledge and skills development, make sure you bring in some fresh ideas. Try reverse mentoring, bringing in young people so that they can talk to you individually or collectively. Third tip for ongoing knowledge and skills development, embrace the subcommittees of your board. It improves governance, knowledge and health of the board. And my fourth tip for ongoing knowledge and skills development, bring in speakers from different areas to the board meetings, not necessarily related to a board agenda item, but just to really expand the thinking and knowledge development of the board. Top tip number two, respond deliberately. In episode 14, I spoke to Michelle Gibbings about gaining influence and using it for good. What you want to be able to do is slow yourself down so you're conscious of how you're reacting to what's going on around you so you can then deliberately respond. And that deliberate response piece is then understanding the people around the table, understanding their agendas, understanding how you relate and interact with them. Tips around responding deliberately. Firstly, know that sometimes influence can happen outside the boardroom. It doesn't always all happen in the boardroom, so make sure you build those relationships and work with people outside the boardroom as well. Tip number two for responding deliberately. In dealing with contentious issues, you might like to try a pre-meeting raising things with people before the meeting, either individually or with a couple of them. Thirdly, in responding deliberately, top tip, make sure the decisions are made by the group inside the boardroom. So the decisions must be made by the group in the boardroom, even though some of those conversations might happen prior to the board meeting. And finally, 
top tip number one, build good relationships. In episode 17, I spoke to Jane Kennedy about empowering young change makers. I think that that's one of the things that we're really good at balancing is being professional and getting the work done that we need to get done, but also having time and space for a bit of banter, a bit of fun, a bit of relationship building. And I think that the fact that we have those connections with each other means that there is that trust. Tips around building good relationships. Firstly, it's everyone, not just the chair. Build those relationships with the other people on your board as well. Secondly, it's a slow burn. Relationships can take some time to build and can take repeat efforts to do so. It's not just going out for one coffee and going, oh, great, here it is, we've got it all sorted. Thirdly, building good relationships, start with one-on-ones to really build that relationship. Fourth tip around building good relationships, some of the things to do, have a phone call, do a coffee catch-up, get a ride to or from the meetings or strategy days with each other, get your nails done together. That was one from Leonie Morgan. There are many ways that you can catch up together. Tip number five around building good relationships, informal chit-chat, get to your board meetings early hang around a little bit afterwards. Just have a chat to people. Tip number five for building good relationships. When there's difficult relationships, and they will happen, deal with them sooner rather than later. All of the board directors that I spoke to said that if they got onto this sooner, things would resolve themselves quicker and more effectively. So there it is, folks. 20 tips to take you into 2020. Thank you for listening to the show over the last six months. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being part of the Facebook group. Thank you for your rates and reviews. If I can ask for one more tip, it is that you continue doing those things. Share, rate, review, join the Facebook group. If we can grow this community, then we can continue to grow our governance wisdom together. Thanks for being here and uh, see you next week.